I play this game way too much. At this point, I don't even know what's spookier. The amount of time I put into Hut or these cards. Let's get into week six of Hut. All right, before we get into this week's news and whatnot from Hunt, I just want to say thank you for the crazy jump in subscriptions. Uh, I hit about 1,000 in the last three weeks. You guys are awesome. I'm about to clip 6,000, and it's a pretty big milestone for myself. And uh, I just want to thank you guys uh, for the support and whatnot, and uh, it's not stopping. So uh, here we are. So like every week, let's start with the alumni. First, the 82 baby alumni, I guess, of the week is Stefan, an 82 overall Stefan Mateau. Nothing to see here. The 83 is Anaheim Ducks' Steve Ruchin. I believe he was the alumni or legend last year for NHL 18, but in this iteration, he gets an 83 overall alumni card. Uh, again, just too slow, much like all the other lower alumni cards that don't have an upgrade. The 85 is a pretty cool one. It's from the Dallas Stars. It is an 85 overall Yuri Letnin, who has a decent shot um, and just not enough speed. But uh, if you pack him, he's not a bad 85 overall. I wouldn't spend a lot of money to go and get him. Again, he's just too slow. And uh, that's a common th common theme with all of the other um, alumni before the 87 and 90s. This week's 87 is a pretty cool one. It is a J.S. Jaguar that has burner. Um, he's a big goalie, so that helps. Uh, he also has burner, which is an added bonus. I actually packed one, and I sold him for a quick 150. Um, and I'm going to show you why I did that in, uh, in a little bit. But if you pack him, 150 is more than enough. I mean, I would never spend that much on a goalie. I made... Hextall because I wanted the legend card, but um, if you if you get uh, J.S. Shiger, even though he has burner, I would 100% sell him. Um, you're gonna get him. For, you can sell him for more than 150k. I just try to make the quick coins. And the 90 overall from the Montreal Canadiens is Serge Savard. Um, super slow speed. Like this, is probably one of the worst 90 overalls. Maybe if you're a Canadiens fan, but yeah, this is one of the worst 90 overalls just because you literally can't use him on the back end. Um, with the new iteration of the game where speed now matters a lot more than it did um, from the initial launch of the game. Um, I just wouldn't recommend him. If you get him, sell him. All right, so let's go over the team of the week. Uh, we got Bergeron, 86 overall with faceoff master. Um, again, he's a great center for third and fourth lines. If uh, you know if you can pack him, he's got a sick faceoff uh, face rating. So um, you know, nothing new here. Uh, we got an 86 overall David Pasternak with Speedster. This card is awesome. Um, definitely wouldn't one you'd want to go out and acquire if you don't have his Evo or anything like that. Uh, great speed, great shot, also great deking. Um, so he's he's uh, much better, especially after the tuner that helped with uh, with keeping the puck on your stick doing deeks. I feel like Sebastian Ajo always has a card during each week, um, but he also gets another team of the week. Um, nothing special. He's got great speed, but um, you know, just like his other ones. On the second line, we've got Artemi Panarin with a team of the week. Uh, great speed, also has burner, so one you're probably going to want to go after if you can. Uh, Debrinkat, low key, great speed, decent shot. He's super small, but an 82 overall, people might sell him for less than uh, you know than than the important stats are worth. Uh, and then Braden Shen, an 84 overall, again decent speed. After that, on the third and fourth lines, nothing special um, that you could use in your lineup. On defense, uh, another Leaf, Morgan Riley gets the team of the week. Um, great speed, terrible shot. Same thing with Hampus Lindholm. These would be guys that uh, you put on your third pairing that you have nowhere near the power play and you don't really shoot with. Charlie McAvoy gets a team of the week as well. 88 overall speed, great, but a shot, again, just, like, terrible uh, and then in net, um, kind of a lame one, but we got Keith Kincaid, who deserved it, but a 79 overall, you're not using him, and his synergy is not going to help you at all either. So moving right along, let's just go over the prime time and milestones for the week. David Pasternak gets one. This card isn't as good as his team of the week, just based on synergy. Um, so if you could, if you have to choose between the two, I would grab, uh, I would grab the team of the week. Um, but still, a great card if you can land him. Next up, we've got Milestone Duncan Keith. Low-key, great shot, and he's only 83 overall. You might be able to score him somewhat decently cheap. Um, terrible shot, don't let him shoot, but um, that speed is viable on the back end. From the Blue Jackets, we've got Anthony Duclair with a prime time. Dope speed. Really might want to get him, um, you know, if you can get him cheap for under 10,000, which you should not should have no problem doing. Um, 
anything that that's that's that fast and you're using like a free-to-play team or you're just you know you're not spending a lot of money um this would be a decent card to pick up next up we've got another depth player that might be decent to acquire again thomas Tatar with great speed and the speedster synergy um again guys i'm not saying to go and make sure you get him in your lineup because he's only 82 overall and his shot is terrible but uh might be something worth just based on the speed alone Next up, we've got an 82 overall Kyle Palmieri. Um, not really worth going out and getting. Uh, his shot is tragic, and his speed is still under 90, um, and he doesn't have burn or anything like that. I would avoid Palmieri. Moving on to Matt Murray, who gets a primetime BU, um, as well as uh, 83 overall. Decent card, and again, anything with BU as far as uh, goaltenders go uh, is definitely worth Next up, we got my boy, little Joe Pavelski. Uh, over 90 speed with a 92 overall and a great shot as well. Um, I mean, his wrist shot power is pretty dookie, but uh, the rest is over 85. So uh, he would be a decent card to pick up. Breakout Masters on a bad synergy. Um, so if you can grab uh, grab Pavelski for the wing, I would definitely recommend it. And it's also Joe Pavelski. Let's go. Also from the Sharks, we've got Mark Edward Vasek getting a milestone card as well. He's decent enough speed, but man, again, kind of like Duncan Keith, just don't let the dude shoot. His shot might be the worst among all gold rare defensemen. This goes without saying, Primetime Ovechkin is a dynamite card with an absolute cannon shot, and he's fast. Uh, I would love to get him, but he's going to be expensive. All right, so let's get into the Halloween event. Uh, just a quick look at uh, the needham i hope you guys have been doing it all month i hope you still are it's going to be a great card to get for the october uh collectible guys so for the how the halloween event is working essentially if you cash in for tombstone hut collectibles as well as the lone dust and bufflin you will get the 90 overall dust and bufflin who's an absolute unit and definitely worth getting now the way to get him is kind of a convoluted one that isn't really explained all that well essentially you have to get the um, the 86 overall Halloween Evander Kane, Matthew Kachuk, Nikita Zadarov, and the Tom Wilson. And now to create all those, you need to have their base card, as well as the specific collectible that goes with them. Now, the problem is, is if you open packs like I did before you actually looked at this, and you got to choose which collectible you uh, that you got for the Halloween event, you'd end up with 50,000 spiders and no, none of the other ones, and unfortunately, each one has its individual own collectible. The next problem is that each base card now is insanely expensive. So if you had an Evander Kane, Matthew Kachuk, Zadarov, or a Tom Wilson, you could clean up, essentially. I had to buy I had to buy Zadarov at 80k, a 78 overall. Um, but that's just the price if you want to make this Bufflin. Now, they also, um, I want to mention the Kachuk one specifically. Uh, the one right here is the Evander Kane one. But the Matthew Kachuk one, the collectibles for it seem to not be as... Um, able to be pulled as often in the packs uh, there's a lot less of them and they're a little bit more expensive uh so if you do get the book ones if you do decide to rip packs those are the ones you want to do and you can buy the other ones for a lot cheaper but those ones are the most expensive they're at around 8k per collectible the other ones are about five now if you don't have those cards don't worry ea put something in called team builder that allows you to get those base cards problem is they require, well, first, they gave us a, a reason to use all the billions of silver rares that you get because there's just so many of them. If you've been opening packs throughout the year, um, you have a million silver rares. It just, for whatever reason, they, they're just the most, um, the most pulled out of any pack, uh, including the gold rares. So um, in that, specifically, you can cash in 10 of those and another gold card a gold common card but the problem is um again i love that they gave us the ability to create the new base card that you need for the set it also means that to go get that gold common card it costs 50k to get you know a justin braun so in this set here you cash in 10 silver rares and a justin braun you get an 82 overall vander kane that you can use in that set um, obviously it's cheaper than going to buy them from the auction house but the problem is again um, buying those gold commons in the auction house the second that everyone saw what they were jumped the price way through the roof now if you're lucky enough to have a few um, then uh, this is definitely one you want to go for but be prepared bufflin's probably going to cost you if you don't want to open any packs 300 400k maybe but he's a 90 overall so it's not useless and he's gigantic so 
Um, it's not like you're getting a little speedster guy. He has good speed and he's gigantic. But so that's how this works. Um, if you do, uh, again, it gives you a bunch of options um, to get them. But again, like if you're looking at here, Brooks or Pick, it's just insanely overpriced. Um, but if you are able to get him, I scored Gabriel Bork, who someone wasn't paying attention for 28k, and then flipped him for 60 immediately. Um, so it's something that you might be able to make money at. Um, but it's how it works. It was a little confusing in the beginning, but um, but yeah. So you basically just turn in those base cards with the collectibles, get the Tombstone collectible, take four of those Tombstone collectibles, and uh, you make the Dustin Bufflin. Also, want to mention to get the lone Dustin Bufflin, you just go to the store and rip this free pack. It'll give you two full days, so the timer starts immediately when you open it. So be sure to be that you're going to play um, because there is a um, a set or uh, sorry objective that you can do where you've got to score a bunch of goals. Uh, they did remove it from scoring 10 goals of Bufflin because it was uh, glitched. Um, but uh, yeah, so it will start with two uh, with two days uh, the second that you do rip the pack, but it is free. So there's that. So with this event, it obviously comes with a comp season of its own to go along with the Gatorade Evo and the Weekend uh, Hut Champions event. So this one will get you an 89 overall Jason Arnott uh, Halloween card, which is a again a kind of a cool card to get so if you're avid into hut top 100 does get it and then um obviously the pack and whatnot progression goes on so there is two rounds of it um to to land that 89 jason arnett in the upcoming uh hut champions it'll be a 91 overall marion hosa dude's got 99 speed basically and a great shot so uh but again it's uh top five only so those are for the biggies um but i'd recommend anyone to try uh hut champions just you know to see if you can land some free packs if anything and finally, I'd just like to give an update on my team. I was able to finally get Joe Sackick. I play this game way too much. So my first line is Solani, Sackick, and Ferrari. I'm hoping to upgrade Ferrari to something. Um, you know, he's a dope card, but uh, looking to see if I can't get something on the same level as uh, my other two guys on the first line. And then my second line is uh, Oates, Gartner, and Morenz. Uh, I don't like Morenz, but he's insanely fast. Then Hull, Linden, and Evo Kuznetsov. And then my fourth line is Curry, Olachuk, and Bob Probert. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of Bob Probert. On defense, I've got Horton and Coffey. And the 90 overall, Dustin Bufflin with Ally Frady. Again, if you don't have Ally Frady, go make him. He's sick. And then on the third line, I've Numenin and uh, Candanico. Then in net, I've got uh, Hextall and Andy Moog for the synergy. So that is my team so far going into this week. So guys, that was Hut News for week six covering the Halloween event. Um, again, if you guys um, want to catch me on Twitch, it's 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday to Friday. Um, that is when I stream pretty much all hot. This week coming up, it's actually flipped, though. It will be 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. just for this week alone. And then back to my regular scheduled stuff on Twitch. The link is down below. Again, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you want to sub, if you want to like, you know, that'd be sick. I'll see you guys next week.